Blessings, everyone. A few years back, I made a couple of videos all about the process of you discussing incarnations, life lessons, as well as looking at the entirety of your higher self, multidimensional spectrum, the oversoul, and the godhead. And I wanted to bring that back. I had released it a few years ago, but you know that was back when it, you know I was doing more of these instructional videos on my Son of Selene slash Scarlet Moon channel at the time, but it was probably just not the right time for it or the right space for it. So I wanted to make sure um, I saved them, I worked on them, and I got them back up for you. And I also added in another video I put out about uh, mapping a lesson, mapping a spiritual lesson, creating a flow chart for how spiritual lessons go about playing out in our lives as well as how they manifest changes as we progress or don't progress through them. So this video is sort of a double vault video where I have combined the both of them and I hope you enjoy. But because again, uh, YouTube does not necessarily allow me to download my own videos from YouTube in any kind of quality better than 720p, you're going to have to forgive me. That is what these videos are showing up in. But I know you're going to enjoy them because we go really deep here and there's going to be a lot to think about, a lot to talk about. And if anything comes up as you watch either of these videos, which are just coming one after another, please leave a comment in the down bar below. I would love to come back and look at these topics or flesh out anything that you might like to explore further. So without further ado, let's crack open the vault and have a look and see what is going on with the process of you and mapping spiritual lessons. In this video, we are going to be talking about the process of you, the process of the incarnation of a soul or fragment of source in form. What is going on when that occurs? What it's for? We're going to be talking about the pre-incarnation process as well as the process of conscious evolution. This is actually a very simplistic uh, cross-section type of uh, example of how all of the different layers of densities and dimensions of consciousness figure into our multidimensional expanse, the multidimensional expanse of me, the multidimensional expanse of you, of all things. And I want you to understand that this is not necessarily depicting a linear elevator system. All of these areas, all of these spaces that we're gonna be talking about are moving around in all kinds of different spaces and ways. And it, it's really about layer after layer after layer after layer. It's not up and down linear, you know, so we're, we're not, you know, don't get attached to that. That's just for the, the purpose of this conversation. Another thing I want to mention is, is that this is going to be talking about the point, really not the meaning, right? Because there isn't necessarily, and you've heard me say it before, a, a singular purpose or meaning of life. The point as source, the universe, prime creator, God, great spirit experiencing itself, is to evolve and that's all right you are coming here having an experience so that source god great spirit prime creator you the universe can actually experience yourself and grow and evolve through form and that is what is happening all of the time so when source decides to have a creation experience to actually experience itself, it actually breaks off a piece of itself, right? Creates a piece of itself to actually go and live that experience and exist in that experience. There are many, many, many multiple layers of consciousness that ultimately do frame that experience and inform that experience as all goes through it. And we might come back and talk about that in another chat, but we're talking about you, we're talking about everyone on the planet, so we're gonna just focus on that experience for this video. So what Source does essentially is create an aspect of itself, which ultimately will be a pure connection 
of soul to itself. And this is called the Godhead. Now, the Godhead essentially is the top of a collective of soul fragments that is in direct line communication with source. There are other aspects of source out there that are not operating as godheads. They're not operating as, um, you know, representatives or uh, transmission points for soul collectives. But a godhead is you and everybody in your soul family collective, everyone in your soul group, and that direct connection to Source. Source creates that Godhead, which then connects all aspects of itself to expand, creating more fragmentations, which comprises an Oversoul group. And at the Oversoul level, there is this unification of every soul fragment that is going to actually have an experience that is also living a unified set of lessons, experiences, and processes at that level and below. You're also already coming in with a lot of lessons and processes and experiences that are already agreed upon and decided at the oversoul level at the Godhead level, and so too is everyone in your soul family. There is a breaking off point, and then all of a sudden, spawning from that oversoul, you have many, 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 many souls, many, many fragments coming out and going through that experience, coming into form in a way where one may or may not have immediate access to the rest of their multidimensional expanse. Now, there are some of us who were born already in a mix of that 3D and 4D experience, right? Our skills have been on, um, you know, didn't necessarily go through awakening the way people talk about awakening. Uh, that is an agreement determined at the soul level, the oversoul level, some oversoul groups do not go through an awakening process because they're kind of already on their oversoul kind of has an experience of like well instead of like going to sleep and then waking up you're going to go through an experience of being active your your skills are already on and you are going to go through an experience in a world where that is not or has not been let's put it that way has not been the normal and you are going to have your story be, you know, very unique, even unique to people that are going through an awakening. And so some soul groups do that. You might be a part of a soul group that does that, right? Soul groups comprise hundreds of thousands of incarnate beings at a time. And so, you know, when we talk about soul family and oversoul collectives, that's what we are referring to. But essentially that desire for an experience is pushed through, to recap, through a godhead, that is ultimately creating and facilitating the creation of all of these soul fragments. Now, coming into form to be an aspect of source experiencing itself, the universe experiencing itself, you're also going to come with very personal journey specific lessons. In addition to the oversoul collective lessons, collective experiences, collective processes, you're going to have lessons and processes that are actually experienced um, and decided at the multidimensional self level, 5, 6, 7, D and above, and the higher self level, 4, 5, 6, 7, D. Again, overlap. There is no harsh divide. Overlap. And going down into form, depending on what your process is, where you have been in that whole experience, um, you're going to have your higher self, multidimensional self lessons, experiences and processes that you're going to go through, that you have to go through. You already agreed to do it, right? You already agreed to do it because you are your higher self. You are your multidimensional self. You are your Godhead. You are source. You've already decided on that quantum level that this is what you're going to do that process begins. Now, 
That process typically begins with purification and clearing and, you know, the divinification of the self in order to create an experience of unification with the higher self and advancing it to be able to further embody that higher self 5D, 6D experience. 6D is when you start to get into that multidimensional self space. The multidimensional self space is also when you have access to all other aspects of yourself, right? This column here is to show you where this is you. This is already you. We are just removing levels and layers of consciousness that do not serve complete unity. This is what unity consciousness is, being all of this at once. And so as you go through those lessons and as you go through those experiences, you know, you're going to start to interact with all kinds of different aspects of yourself, all of your divine aspects, even aspects of you that have never been in form. You know, you're getting access to parts of yourself, past, present, future, it's all quantum, it's all now, that ultimately further and enhance and accelerate your experience to be able to unify and reunify all levels and layers of your consciousness and be that perfect, pure embodiment of all of this in form. That is what we are doing here. So when there is a decision to actually incarnate in form, there are a number of different considerations, a number of different agreements, a number of different decisions that go into the process of you or the process of me or the process of the cat or however you want to look at it. You can kind of separate those. I don't think it's a good idea to separate them too much into lessons and experiences and alchemy. So when we talk about lessons and experiences, we're talking about essentially what is decided to be the mission statement or the initiative of that being through that incarnation, through that process. Now, we've got lessons and experiences that are, of course, agreed upon on the higher self, multidimensional self level and the oversoul level. So you can look at lessons and all of that as packs. And of course, there's also the source level, the, you know, prime creator, uh, universal level as well. And that goes into that incarnation experience. Now, what those experiences are, are of course, perhaps deeply personal, right? Depending on what's going on with that being, that higher self, that multidimensional self. And of course, also maybe even shared in some ways across different soul groups and soul collectives. What that soul collective what that oversoul uh, priority is and what that higher self priority is. Sometimes what can happen is that these lessons and these priorities get pushed, right? These things are like, we have to do this. Like not because it's um, karma or we're being punished or being blocked, but this has an opportunity to unlock a great deal more of self, more of that multidimensional expanse, and thus also unlock more multidimensional, universal, and enlightened experiences for everyone, whether it's for the self, the Oversoul Collective, the Oversoul Family Group, or the entire, you know, of existence, the entirety of existence. You know, there is nothing that's considered too small. And so we have all of these things come with us as we go through this, right? On a very quantum level, you know, from a space where it is out of time. So it's not necessarily something that's from a past life uh, and it stays from the past life and then it gets brought into the present or it's pushed from uh, something else going on in the present onto us now. It's all at once, right? All in that singularity. And as we go through the incarnation experience, you know, the more we level up, the more we understand these with greater and greater clarity. Now, for some folks, you know, it really depends on, again, how your process goes. 
what exactly are you awake to, aware to, and consciously working on when it comes to your soul connection, your personal connection to source, God, prime creator, your Godhead, oversoul, your higher levels? What have you connected? And operating from a pure place. And you have to be willing to go very, very deep. Sometimes it's the entire Oversoul Collective going through that experience and there's a, you know, a select number of lessons. We are all agreeing to go through different variants of the same type of experience as the same type of fragment to a certain degree. Of course, it's all unique. There's no such thing as a one-to-one -one perfect mirror reflection in that way. But it allows for the accumulation of that experience, of that energetic information to assist not only in the universe evolving, experiencing itself, but everything in that universe, including you. As we get on to the alchemy side of things, right? This is still pre-incarnation. Now the oversoul and the higher levels, all of that all go through a process of setting you up to go through this incarnation. DNA. DNA on the physical and on the etheric. So when we talk about DNA on the physical, DNA on the physical would be what family situation, what family line is going to be most conducive for this experience. Do we want this person to go through the process of focusing on leveling up really, really fast? Okay, this uh, DNA condition seems pretty good over here. Is there an agreement to maybe settle some stuff and then go through this um, in a different way? Okay, this situation over here is set up. Some oversouls do work with, you know, specific family lines. Some of our oversouls have nothing to do with genetic biology and the idea of ancestral heritage and all of that. It's, it's just not applicable or relevant to that soul experience. And so it really depends on what is happening there, right? And that requires that self-investigation. This also then comes into the spiritual heritage or the um, the etheric heritage, right? Okay, what aspects, what higher aspects are also playing a dominant role, at least in the beginning? Because the higher you go, the more access you have to everything, and you're not stuck. You're not stuck with one past life or one um, spiritual path or process or anything like that. But what innate abilities and skills are getting baked in to at least the starting character. It is like building a character in, as an avatar in a video game. You're setting up all of these things. Some things are unlocked right away. Some things are developed later down the road. And that goes into the energy and the spirit portion of it as well. What is going on in the moment around that incarnation, right? What energetic factors are most conducive to all of these vibrations, all of these alchemical elements coalescing and forming so that one can actually step in to that incarnation. And yes, there are considerations about things like environmental energies, um, even going so far as topography, not just the family. Yes, uh, universal, galactic, astrological, astronomical aspects all play a part of it because, right, we are building this form to work with. We are building this experience to go through. Now, of course, that's just the very, very beginning. We're not beholden to all of that. It's not about being beneath all of this. It's about what connections are coming in already on and ready to go to work. So that also plays a big part in how this form and this initiative, this experience, this incarnation process gets underway. This is also where, you know, guides, guidance realms, because your soul family collective shares guides. You don't have the same guides constantly. You know, some kind of dip in and out. Uh, you might swap. I've got some, you know, some soul siblings that, you know, we, we share guides 
all of the time, you know, and it, you know, they'll, they'll kind of, you know, run back and forth and all of that. So that is also determined what is going on there. Environment. What environment is most going to, is going to be most conducive to these lessons? You know, what is going to actually set this being up to go through this initiative, through this process in a way where something is going to actually not only be learned, but an initiative is carried out and that change, that collateral ripple is going to actually occur in a way where it benefits the highest interest of all concerned, which leads to co-creation as well. What is being set up so that we can also see a shift in the advancement of the universal experience by switching what is getting co-created from a lower platform. This all really depends on where a person is in their process and in their work. Co-creation also, deciding of the skills for co-creation, what skills are actually going to be the best for this experience at an oversoul level and on a higher self level and where that co-creation, that change needs to happen, how it's going to go about and what exactly is the function that is agreed upon, that is agreed to be played out by this soul, right? Sometimes there is a function agreed upon by entire oversoul levels, godhead levels, you know, everyone in that oversoul group is performing a, a variant of a selection of functions or many, many functions. And on a higher self level, on a multidimensional self, you know, more individuated level, then there's kind of like, what's this being's function for this set period? Now, your function is going to change constantly, right? There's a lot of distortion uh, that was created in, you know, that got people thinking that there's only one purpose. They need to find one purpose. They need to marry that purpose and be stuck there constantly. No, that's not what's going on. This is just something that, you know, is again, it's it, we're, we're talking about the incarnation, the beginning of the incarnation and what's decided. And then where you grow from there. And then all of these decisions are then weighed against what else is going on in that environmental situation as well as the co-creation situation, right? How is this being interacting with other beings? All of that gets funneled in, right, to all of you to be unlocked, to be discovered. Sometimes it's already unlocked to a certain degree. It doesn't all show up at once. That goes in to the process that you're experiencing in this incarnation now. We start off with, of course, the birth of not only the incarnation, but the birth of the lesson, the initiation of the lesson and observation of reality. So whenever we actually step into a space where we are learning a lesson, whether we're conscious of it or not in the moment, we are already commencing with not only observing the external, but in observing our internal reality. And we are then, of course, noticing that uniqueness what is going on, even if it's just at the bare level that is making this situation different in some way than what I feel or what I am. Really doing a lot of sightseeing around this lesson. Harmonious examples versus discordant examples. Just really doing a lot of observation of the world one is being given to observe and experience and how that's going to get integrated comes next. Choice point. Do you adapt or do you not adapt? Adapting to what is going on maybe in that external expression, that external reflection, whether you are accepting what you are shown or you are not accepting what you are shown or you are adapting by changing something that you have been given, accepting, not accepting. How are you adapting? If you don't adapt to what is going on, well, then you go down to stagnation. You're stuck. 
Now, whether you're stuck in that space of exploring or you're stuck in just sort of empty observation, what happens is, is that nothing changes on the external, right? And suddenly, because they're not necessarily choosing to do anything about what is going on in their life, they've become more of an object in their own life, which then leads to routine, which is another choice point. Am I just gonna keep doing the same thing that I did yesterday and the day before that and wait for change? If I keep plugging away and keep my head down, A, B, C, repeat the same pattern, you know, will that routine eventually go from something that is a coping mechanism to a soothing mechanism to a healing mechanism? And if they do that, if they choose to go into routine and say yes to that, they actually go back into stagnation, which creates a paralyzed looping reality. However, if they choose not to keep up that routine, they can go back and observe, right? Maybe they got so stuck in their routines, they ended up not seeing everything else there is out there, right? Because when you get stuck in a routine, you get stuck in a paralyzed loop, you end up in a space where there is nothing else. You're constantly getting the universe reflecting back at you over and over and over again, that which is an alchemical match, a vibrational match for your routine. However, choosing to break from that routine, we get a chance to observe more reality, explore more reality, and we come back to the ability to choose to adapt again. As we go through adaptation, we get brought immediately to another choice point. Do our actions in our adaptation actually prove to be conducive to our lesson progress or our lesson completion? If the answer is yes, well, we move on to the result that of course leads to growth. Growth within the self, a fortification of the self, more crystallization of the true self in form. If we take on habits or we take on beliefs, we take on choices and expressions that are not conducive to lesson completion, you know, maybe it's not necessarily just going the other way, but it's actually counteractive, counterintuitive, or we adapt by maybe Uh, going a completely different way and not even learning at all, then we end up with conditioning. And with conditioning, this is where it's taking one away from the initial lesson plan, right? It's taking one off course. That conditioning could come in the form of what you are getting, right, from the interactions you have with others that are, by the way, everyone is learning their lessons, whether they're sharing it with you or not, are you learning the, the, the tools that you need? And if we get into that realm of conditioning, sometimes you're getting things that are habits, choices, and expressions that ultimately have nothing to do with your success, but you're getting a new condition. Maybe the no in this would be choosing instead to mirror or emulate or copycat the external, or to suppress, or to shift away from what is being adapted here. But the adaptations are not conducive. And then conditioning results in belief and assumption formation. So all of a sudden, these rigid belief systems, rigid assumptions show up and become imprinted into the experience. This can, of course, create projections. Now, all of a sudden, they are co-creating more of the same conditioning or more of the same expression and reflection in the external due to their beliefs and assumptions, whether it's their beliefs and assumptions about themselves, their beliefs and assumptions about other people, other paths, other ways of experiencing reality, these beliefs and assumption formations make more hardened patterns, and then all of a sudden, they keep seeing that reinforcement show up that is keeping them in a loop, which actually 
progresses to a choice point, right? Do they hold on to those beliefs and assumptions? Do they hold on to the reaction formations? Do they hold on to the survival programs? Do they hold on to maybe the stereotypes or the uh, indoctrinations? And where do they go? If they hold on to them, right, maybe they feel safe because they don't really know themselves. And so they kind of identify themselves as this product of their beliefs and nothing else. Well, then they end up back at the routine choice point, which they can, of course, choose to maintain and live in stagnation, or they can break the routine, which is similar to not holding those beliefs, go back to observe reality, explore, adapt, and see what adaptations are, of course, conducive to a successful lesson completion, which will lead to growth. And in moments of growth, we see the external shift, the first external shift. It's not the only one. We are starting to see transformations of what is going on in the external reality reflection. So all of a sudden, new opportunities are presenting. And then suddenly we get into the demonstration result. We have to, of course, demonstrate the shift in ourselves to maintain the shift in the external. This brings us to another choice point, consistency. Are we going to be consistent with this demonstration of observing reality, exploring that reality, adapting, making certain that we are working with adaptations that are conducive to this lesson completion, which leads to more growth, another external shift, more demonstration, and another external shift. If we do, then absolutely we have that external shift show up. If we are not consistent with that flow, with that harmony, we can either end up with a backslide, maybe misses the point, or has a misapplication, taking the healthy supportive teachings and the healthy supportive adaptations and maybe using them in less than helpful or less than healthy ways. And this result can backfire in a number of different ways, but most often this misapplication has to do with one maybe going into a space where they believe they have found a new formula, you know, a new wash, rinse, and repeat that is going to continue to give more and more when it really does require continuous and ongoing adaptation. This brings to an interesting choice point where there is an opportunity to make a conduct shift. When we look at the conduct shift, okay, what is happening? Is that conduct shift, okay, I'm catching myself, I am I'm, I'm forming a, a, a new unhealthy habit, or maybe I am missing the point of the thing that I'm using, or I'm missing the point of the thing that I'm learning. I just created a, a new situation that ultimately is causing this backfire. Or maybe I'm projecting my journey in such a way where it is creating more of the same struggle that I was going through before. And if yes, go back to adapt, form some conducive adaptations when it comes to lesson completion, grow, have an external shift, demonstrate that shift, find consistency and another external shift. If the choice is no, no conduct shift, you know, just further and further indoctrination, doubling down, tripling down, and trying to apply more force which is the cosmic version of burying one's head in the sand, conditioning once more, bringing one back to choose to hold on to it, go to a routine and stagnate, or let go of it. But let's say in this example, have passed through the consistency threshold and have gotten to another external shift, which results in another choice point, the release of the old self. The release of the old self is the complete integration of the new reality experience, the manifestation that's there. We do not want to try to smuggle or plus one the old conditioned lower self into our new reality. It does not work. It actually prevents us from stepping into that new reality. 
right? Which is happening incrementally as one progresses. But Alex regresses. Maybe something has happened where Alex is like, look, I've been doing all of this for my old self. One might take all of the new tools and try to apply it to the old self. If Alex does, well, there's this re regression. Alex is falling out of alignment with the reality that was just created, which is a form of self-sabotage, which leads to which leads to a misapplication of the teachings of what has been learned, which of course takes them back to a choice point for a conduct shift, growth, shift, demonstration, consistency, shift, release the old self. If there's no conduct shift, Alex may accidentally be subjecting themselves to another reconditioning process and you know, would be best served to, of course, work through that and clear it as fast as possible. Let's say Sam goes the other way. Sam is also having trouble releasing the old self, whether it is because Sam is trying to protect memories, protect associations, or has maybe not necessarily uh, developed the confidence that the release of the old self is something that they will do effectively or do correctly because what can sometimes happen is that we get to a point where we need to release the old self and we actually see that the release of the old self means the release of a lot of familiar comfortable surroundings and which leads to well more of a circular reality experience suddenly that circular reality for sam is why am i just replacing an old pattern with a new pattern that I've stopped progressing. Which of course brings Sam to a choice point. Sam can either reject the pattern, get back to demonstration, consistency in an external shift, or maybe keep the pattern, which leads to back to stagnation, the debate of the routine, and if not careful, you know, might be there for a little bit. However, Sam could always choose to get rid of that routine, go back to observe reality, explore, adapt, and get back to the chance to re release the old self, which of course means that Sam and Alex level up and they are brought into a completely different reality experience. While this is a linear flowchart, this is not something that you should try to assume could take X amount of days, X amount of months or years. You never want to project that kind of off and away, out and waiting kind of experience with this. You know, these kinds of lessons can be completed in moments or in days or in weeks. It really all depends on not only the dedication to the process, but the quality of the adaptations and the ability to observe, integrate, and comprehend the lesson as it is experienced. This is something that you can relate to any kind of lesson or any kind of block you may be experiencing. You may find out that something that you're trying to manifest can actually be manifest an easier way. You may find out that something that you think you're supposed to be creating or experiencing is actually taking you away from a lesson. And what the lesson would bring is actually far superior.